before we even get into your backstory, is this something, your activism in particular, is it who you've always been? Or is this something that somewhere along your journey, you found that there's a cause out there that's greater than me and I need to stand up and fight for it? I, th- I think subconsciously and unknowingly, I probably, this has always who been who I've been, you know, um, coming from coming from the Bronx and growing up in marginalized communities. I, you know, I was never someone who liked injustice. I was the, I was the kid who fought the bullies to protect the people they was picking on, you know, and, and you had to be rough. You had to be tough. You had to have some level of strength or you was prey. So I grew up in that, in that era, I grew up with that mind state my whole life that I wasn't going to be oppressed. I wasn't going to be the person that you picked on. I wasn't going to stand up for myself, whether it was me against a hundred people or whatever, I was going to always stand up for myself. And I think that was instilled in me early from my father at a young age and my grandmother who always told me, you know, you have to defend yourself. You can't allow people to take advantage of you. So that that's that's always been my mind state. You know, I was never a bully. I was never someone who picked on anyone. I never looked for trouble. And even when we was in the streets and we were doing things that was deemed illegal or criminal, it was never my moral compass. Even when I was doing illegal things, it wasn't something that I, you know, that I enjoyed, you know, And most people I know that when we were doing things, it wasn't things that we really enjoyed. We just felt like it was a sense of desperation and we had to do what we had to do to survive. But I always feel like my spirit connected to Martin Luther King's and Malcolm X's and, you know, I would watch old war movies and just felt connected to Denzel and Glory and things like that. That's always been where my spirit was, you know, that's always felt like what I wanted to be connected to that type of change and that type of energy. So, you know, I just think it was just a natural, you know, evolution of me as a man and as an individual to where I was actually, the minute that I was actually introduced to what activism was, you know, because for a long time, I thought activism was something different. Even when I attached myself to the Martin Luther Kings and the Malcolms, you know, I just felt like, you know, there was more religion and it was more based on just being a preacher and things of that nature. And, and I never, to me, religion was something that I adhered to, but it wasn't my 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 end all be all. You know, I was more of a spiritual person than a religious person. So a lot of times I didn't feel like it was for me to, to walk in that path, you know? So when I started to realize that activism was not collect, connected to religion, it was connected to your moral compass, you know, being a good person, just somebody who wanted the right things to be done, who wanted to live in a society of equity and justice, you know? And when I realized that, that I could look like me and be where I come from and still be connected in, to you know, to our communities, to hip hop culture, and still have that same stance. You know, I think that's when it started to dawn on me that, and, and it, because it wasn't normal, that you know, I didn't have to fit into a mold. Mm-hmm. You know, in order to be someone who wanted to stand up and, and, and fight for civil rights, I didn't have to look or sound like anybody. I just had to do it the way that I did. Well, I think that's what's most attractive about you, and I think that's what is attracting the legions of people to what you're doing is the fact that you're doing it your way. You're not selling out. You're not pretending to be anything other than what you are. And I think when people are authentic and they're very transparent about what their motives are, it's something inviting about that. People are attracted to that. And, you know, even hearing you, because as as you're talking, I'm thinking about, you know, the, 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 the civil rights era. With the with the Kings and and, and um, Malcolm X, yes, you're right. It was it, it it felt like, and I never really thought about that. It, it felt like religion was at the nucleus of what they were doing, and to see you out there, you're doing it in your own way. You're still very real, very thorough. You're still very much a rapper, but you're going at this civil rights thing. And you're making change, not compromising who you are. So I, I love that about you. And that's why I wanted, I had to get you on this show. Um, before we move further, was there anybody in your family? I know, you know, I'm a guy who's raised with six brothers in my house. Mm-hmm. So 
my mom, my family, my dad, they, they brought us up very similar to as you speak. Was there anybody in your family who was an activist? Anybody who, you know, outside of grooming you to be a man of integrity, was there anybody who was like, no, there's a greater cause out here. You need to be fighting for our people. Or is that part, just that part right there, something that you found um, as you got older? Yeah, I don't, there was, I don't believe, I mean, not to my, not to my knowledge, was there any active civil rights activists or even practicing within my, my, my family. Um, we just, we, my family was just really big on integrity. Like you said, like that, that was the main thing, you know, they're from the South. My family comes from the South and we were big on integrity and authenticity and just being who you are and, and being comfortable being who you were and not trying to fit into anything else. You know, that that's the main thing. My grandmother, who was one of my, you know, major influences in my life, used to always say, do your own thing. Like, you know, you don't don't follow nobody. Don't be no follower. You be a leader. You do what you want to do. And if they don't want to do it, then the hell with them, you know. And that always stuck with me. You know, it was t- hard times, you know, because – when you when you be friends with people, you want to you want to fit in, and then sometimes it doesn't work. So, you know. But as I got older, I got so comfortable in that space, you know, just being who I was, unapologetically, you know. And I think activism was one of those things that just just eventually just pulled me in. I think I think it was a call, and I think you know we all have purpose. I think activism and and that was always my purpose. Like when I think, because like I told you, when I think back to what I was attracted to in the movies, I always attracted, was attracted to the hero, the person who was willing, like I used to watch 300 and see Leonidas and be like, the man was willing to die with 300 people. Like that's that's something for me is honorable. Like don't matter what it, what it was, how many he went against, he knew he was dying for something that was right. And win, lose, or draw, he wasn't going to sacrifice that, you know, and that always was my mind state, you know, and so I think activism was was just nat- my natural call. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.